गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट वेलकम टू टूडे सप्तमोलॉजी क्लास टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू वेरी इम्पोर्टेंट टॉपिक्स गोइंग डिस्कशन अबाउट यूवेटिस यूवेटिस इज वेरी इम्पोर्टेंट मैक्सिमम एग्जामिनर वेरी चूजी अबाउट यूवेटिस इवेन इन एस सी क्यू एम सी क्यू एंड फाइबर प्रोसिडी सो आई hope everybody to attend my class and should be attentive so <clears throat> before going to main topics that is uveitis we should know some anatomy of evil uveitis related so you know our eyeball coats what are the coats of the eyeball outer coats medial vascular and inner retina or neural layer outer coat that is sclera and cornea and medial structure that is iris ciliary body and coral medial coat is the vascular coat highly vascular anterior to posterior it is divided into iris ciliary body and coral very important anterior to posterior anterior is iris medial is ciliary body and posterior is coral and some examiner sometime ask to you not all examiner what is the actual meaning of uvea and this uvea comes from what if unluckily uh, question to you uvea comes from what structure the answer is uvea is a greek word meaning is grapes meaning is grapes and this pictures of cross section of the eyeball outer course is sclera and cornea and medial this is the very important medial anteriorly is iris iris and medial course of vascular is ciliary body and posterior part of vascular structure is choroid choroid another name of this vascular tract vascular structure is uveal tract another name of this medial vascular structure is uveal tract so this picture helps to understand what is iris what is ciliary body and what is choroid this is a cross section of the eyeball now this is the ciliary body this slide actually important for mcq so this is the four or five point very very important for mcq ciliary body this is the forward continuation of the choroid this is the forward continuation of the choroid and it is about 6 mm long very important in mcq 6 mm long and it consists of two parts very very important pars plicata anterior one third that is vascular part anterior one third that is vascular part and it is 2 mm and pars plana 4 mm this is the posterior two third and avascular part repeat my two last two things in ciliary body consists of two parts pars plicata length is 2 mm this is the anterior structure anterior one third and it is vascular part and pars plana 4 mm and posterior it is posterior two third this is the avascular actually pars plana is 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 the another name is when inflamed this term is pars planaitis this is the intermediate uveitis so when i go to classification uveitis this pars plana is very important pars plana just you think what are the parts of the ciliary body anterior to the 2 mm it's pars plicata and posterior to the is 4 mm and pars plana and function of ciliary body this is five question some examiner uh, <coughs> sometimes puzzle to students and tell me some function of the ciliary body so you very easy function very very easy you know aqueous humor production is very important and it is usually by ciliary body so number one function is formation of aqueous humor maintain intracular pressure it is 
as like same function maintain intraocular pressure ciliary muscle help in accommodation you know accommodation is very important for near vision so ciliary muscle is responsible for accommodation so ciliary muscle present in ciliary body very very important and sometimes sometimes you no know, uh, normally nutrition to avascular tissue so this is the four important function what are the function of ciliary body formation of aqueous humor maintain intraocular pressure ciliary muscles helps in accommodation and nutrition to avascular tissue and it just know about ciliary muscle occupies most of the outer part of the ciliary body this are non striated muscle this is the important so ciliary muscle is non striated muscle and having three parts so here important things is this are non striated muscle having three parts what are that parts longitudinal fibers circular fibers and radial fiber just longitudinal fibers circular fibers and radial fiber among three among three that is longitudinal fibers and circular fiber radial fiber which fibers important in accommodation this is the fiber question among three that is longitudinal circular and radial mainly circular fiber helps in accommodation just you know about this so about ciliary muscle this is the non striated muscle having three parts longitudinal fibers circular fibers and radial fiber among three circular fibers help in accommodation and this ciliary muscle supplied by parasympathetic fibers okay this is the little about ciliary muscle now this is our main topics of today what is uveitis uveitis is a inflammation of the uveal tract simply inflammation some examiner in sq uh, question as like define uveitis so answer is inflammation of the uveal tract and classification classify the uveitis very important classify the uveitis in so many way so number one anatomical classification number two clinical pathological etiological among four which is very important anatomical classification invariably in sq question examiner give question anatomical write down the anatomical classification uveitis question is anatomical classification so you properly know about anatomical classification so anatomical classification you should know some term what is iritis is inflammation of iris only what is iritis inflammation of iris what is sacclitis inflammation of ciliary body what is idiosaclitis very very important actually anatomical classification in broad heading we classifies enteritis intermediate uveitis and posterior uveitis in broad heading again i say in broad heading anatomically we classify the uveitis anterior uveitis intermediate uveitis and posterior uveitis but you this this term you should know clearly what is iritis inflammation of iris what is sacclitis inflammation of ciliary body and idiosaclitis idiosaclitis inflammation of iris also inflammation of anterior one third of the ciliary body that is pars plicata very important sometimes examiner asks you clarify it or what do you mean by anterior body so answer is inflammation of iris and inflammation of anterior one third of the ciliary body that is pars plicata and intermediate uveitis is another term pars planitis and what is pars planitis what is intermediate uveitis inflammation of posterior two third of ciliary body that is pars plana inter inflammation of posterior two third of ciliary body so before anatomy classification first slide or second slide show part of the ciliary body anterior part of the ciliary body is pars plicata and posterior part of the ciliary body is pars plana when inflammation of pars plana that is the intermediate uveitis and posterior uveitis 
inflammation of choroid another term is choroiditis and last term is penivitis that is inflammation of holy beta inflammation of holy beta so what is anatomical classification maybe intermediate maybe sorry uh, anterior uveitis intermediate uveitis posterior uveitis and penivitis what is anterior uveitis inflammation of iris and anterior one third of ciliary body intermediate uveitis inflammation of the pars plana posterior uveitis inflammation of the choroid and penivitis when inflammation of whole ileal tract whole you must write down whole ileal tract this is the anatomical classification and very important to your sec even in even in viva force this this pictures help to help to understand the anatomical classification of uveitis this is the pictures colors red color inflammation of iris and inflammation of anterior one third of the ciliary body this is the anterior uveitis or another term is idiosaclitis this is the intermediate uveitis when inflammation of pars plana another term is pars plana it is and posterior uveitis is green color totally green color when this is the inflammation of choroid this is the posterior uveitis when whole ileal tract is inflamed term is penivitis i think you understand anatomical classification of uveitis now another way of classification is clinical clinical just acute uveitis and chronic uveitis actually it is depends on depends on onset of inflammation just acute uveitis sudden symptomatic onset and it lasts for 6 weeks or more and chronic uveitis is insidious asymptomatic onset last for more than 3 months or even years and pathological is granulomatous and non granulomatous and another important classification is etiological etiological why very important because it is important in sq and viper positive some examiner give question classify the etiological classification of uveitis so answer is like this what are that there may be broad heading endogenous and exogenous and under endogenous there may be idiopathic uveitis there may be infective uveitis there may be seronegative uveitis sympathetic uveitis and neoplastic uveitis infective uveitis is very important there may be example tuberculosis and syphilis and exogenous exogenous actually actually there is a if there is a some trauma or corneal ulcer trauma followed by uveitis known as traumatic uveitis this is exogenous cause and following corneal ulcer if develop uveitis this is the exogenous cause so endogenous also important exogenous also important so this is the etiological classification and another some important question some examiner asks to students in viva pose tell me some causes of seronegative uveitis tell me some causes of seropositive uveitis tell me some some in causes of infective uveitis so infective uveitis example tuberculosis syphilis even viral even fungal so you just little bit know about what is infective uveitis infective may be caused viral maybe cause fungal and maybe cause tuberculosis maybe cause syphilis and seronegative and seropositive also responsible for etiological endogenous uveitis so you should know what are the seronegative uveitis number 1 ankylosis spondylitis rhytos disease juvenile idiopathic arthritis psoriatic arthritis and inflammatory viral disease these all are seronegative uveitis cause ankylosis spondylitis rhytos disease juvenile idiopathic psoriatic and inflamed among five ankylosis spondylitis is very important because some examiner in sq question even in viper positive there is a scenario give you give a scenario to you like 
uh, suppose a patient come to you severe pain in eye and also give history of low back pain when low back pain that means some defects in vertebra in low, low vertebra is some defects so, so ankylosis pondylitis usually young person is responsible the ankylosis pondylitis is very this topic is very choosy of some examiner so ankylosis pondylitis is very important this slide is why important because if examiner sometimes ask you tell me some seronegative uveitis causes of seronegative then this is the causes of seronegative uveitis and seropositive arthritis is also responsible for uveitis examples are rheumatoid arthritis and sla sla now alkalosis little about little bit know about some alkalosis pondylitis you know low back pain patients complain low back pain and if history of low back pain and there is a uveitis here we we should exclude the maybe patient causes ankylosis pondylitis if patient give low back pain and at the same time patients complain uveitis then we search the cause of uveitis maybe ankylosis pondylitis so what are the complaints of ankylosis pondylitis patients low back pain low back pain and stiffness usually young men are responsible this is the hla b27 b27 positive and x ray we and on that case we give some x ray this x ray shows the bambus pain bambus pain so it is sometimes examiner asks to student also this is the uh, table of ophthalmology but is actually subject of medicine but some ophthalmologists sometimes ask to students what are the features of x-ray in case of ankylosis pendulitis so answer is bamboo spine and here we will find in case of eye enteriobitis so if patients come to us with enteriobitis and history of low back pain we should exclude the cause of ankylosis spondylitis these are pictures of ankylosis spondylitis inflammation of joints hair inflammation of joints and uh, features develop bamboo spine bamboo spine in this feature why i show because bamboo spine you should know clearly so maximum examiner sometimes asks to you what are the features of x-ray of ankylosis spondylitis answer is bamboo spine now this is another SEQ question. What are the causes of acute enteriobitis? Causes are ankylosis spondylitis, Richard disease, psoriatic arthritis, inflammatory viral disease, and postoperative enteriobitis. This important five causes responsible for acute enteriobitis. If examiner or even in written queue, written question what are the causes of equity and causes of equity and delivery answer is this now another question sometimes asked to students or even in SAQ question what are the causes of chronic diabetes chronic diabetes is last for three months or even year this this is the term is known as chronic diabetes and causes of chronic diabetes are tuberculosis rheumatoid arthritis syphilis sarcoidosis bichet syndrome and multiple sclerosis and leprosy also responsible for development of causes of chronic diabetes so just know about what are the important causes of chronic diabetes and another SAQ question, what are the causes of granulomatous uveitis? Granulomatous. Can, pathological classification of uveitis is granulomatous and non-granulomatous. So, what are the granulomatous uveitis and cause here? Tuberculosis, no, you know about. Sarcoidosis, syphilis, leprosy, BKH means Vogt Quana Harada syndrome. Vogt Quana Harder syndrome and sympathetic ophthalmia. 
Bhakt Kwarna, the Harada syndrome and sympathy of them all are discussed in my chapters of ocular trauma. Just revised and you understand what is VKS, what is sympathetic ophthalmia. So this is the causes of granulomatous cerebritis. At least you should know tuberculosis and sarcoidosis. This too is important to normal student. And some examiner in Viper for say asks to you, what are the, tell me some systemic history if with uh, systemic history if patients are suffering from uveitis. What are the systemic history of uveitis? Simply. Then you should give history who are suffering from uveitis. What are the low grade fever, joint pain, arthritis, low back pain is important for ankylosis spondylitis, cough important for exclude tuberculosis, chest pain important to exclude for tuberculosis, sarcoidosis, and bile habit. Also important for exclude the inflammatory bile disease like Crohn's disease, like ulcerative uh, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. So another question sometimes examiner by examiners to student, if a patient comes to it chest pain and cough and there is a features of evitis. What are the important cause here? I repeat my question. Sometimes examiner asks to students, patients of evitis, features of evitis comes to us and give history of and chest pain. What are the possible causes of uveitis here? At least two you should know. This is the two answer is sarcoidosis and tuberculosis. So if question of history of cough and chest pain, your answer or thinking causes tuberculosis and sarcoidosis. And now entry uveit is very important. What are the what are the things you should know about entry uveitis? Some clinical features sign symptom and treatment very important regarding entry uveitis you should know clinical features and treatment very important so what are the symptoms of entry uveitis symptoms patients may complain severe pain redness photophobia lacrimation and loss of vision this is the five important symptoms of acute entry uveitis. And what are the signs of this acute entry uveitis? Are ciliary tenderness. So what do you mean by ciliary tenderness? If you press on eyeball as like sixth examination, your two finger of two hand place on your eyeball and press from a gentle press. If patient feel there is a pain or tenderness, that means ciliary tenderness. And there may be ciliary congestion we we'll may find. And corneal signs, very important. This corneal sign is KP. So KP is why very important? Because this is the important sign of anterior uveitis. Some examiner asks to you or even in SCQ, what is KP? So if question arises, what is KP? Answer is, this is the small conglomeration of inflammatory cells deposited on corneal endothelium. Conglomeration means just accumulation. When inflammatory cells accumulated on the corneal endothelium, very hair, hair term is very important is corneal endothelium. You know there is a five layers of cornea, inner layer is corneal endothelium. So small conglomeration of inflammatory cells deposited on corneal endothelium and it is seen by slit lamp examination. Normal by trust light it is impossible to find out of KP. So it is another important 
this KP is seen by which, which instrument? Slit Lamette calculation. So, there may be KP, what are the types of KP? There may be small, medium and large cells. Large, some examiner chose to say mutton fat KP. Regarding large, some examiner chose to say mutton fat KP. This causes of mutton fat KP, what are the UVTs mutton, mutton fat KP are found? Answer is granulometers UVTs like tuberculosis, like leprosy, like sarcoidosis. As when there is a granulometers UVTs, there is a chance to chance to develop large KP. So some examiners sometimes ask, uh, ask to student, what are the causes of large KP? What are the causes of mutton fat KP? So answer is tuberculosis, sarcoidosis. And another types of KP, this small and medium and large KP, this the depends on size of KP. S depends on size of KP, size, there may be small, there may be medium and size. And another, another types of KP, there may be fresh KP, there may be old KP. Fresh, usually round, white and hydrated. And old KP, usually pigmented, usually pigmented. When non-pigmented, this is the fresh KP. When pigmented, there is the old KP. So, question of regarding KP, define KP, types of KP, and what are the causes of large KP? And what are the causes of small KP? Usually small KP found in causes of anterior vitis, like ankylosis, spondylosis, we may find small KP. And retard disease, we may found small KP. So, this is the examples of small KP, large KP found in case of tuberculosis, sarcoidosis, and leprosy. Gainometers, if it is, there is a large KP. And this is the, another types of KP, fresh KP and old KP. And this is the This is the pictures of cells in aquas. It is also important of ocular sign of uveitis. And this cell is usually possible to see by slit lemon examination. So, regarding ocular sign, first ciliary tenderness, ciliary congestion, corneal sign, then anterior chamber sign. Anterior chamber sign. Aqueous cell. Cell should be counted in oblique slit lamp beam. This is not important to you, but uh, just you thinking aqueous cell will be seen by slit lamp examination. And aqueous flare, also another important anterior chamber sign, and it is why develop aqueous flare due to leakage of protein into aqueous. Leakage of protein into aqueous. So, aqueous chamber sign is aqueous cells and aqueous flare. Both are both are possible to find out by slit lamp examination. And another important is people. Very, very important. People, what are the features of people in aqueous interviews? Small, irregular, reaction to light is sluggish. Very, very important in MCQ, SAQ. Some examiner asks to you, what are the peculiar features of aqueous interviews? Answer is small, irregular, and reaction to light is sluggish. And what about intraocular pressure? Maybe normal, maybe high, maybe below normal. Hypopion. Hypopion. You know what is hypopion? Hypopion is pass in anterior chamber. This pass is sterile pass. Sterile pass. And sometimes also found in blood. When blood in anterior chamber, term is hyphema. And not all in uh, in hyphema, not found in all acute anterior uveitis, especially herpetic uveitis and traumatic uveitis, you may found hyphema. So, so first sign is ciliary tenderness, ciliary congestion, corneal sign, KP, 
aqueous chamber sign, pupil, intraocular pressure, hypofusion, and hyphema. This is the sign of acute enterocolitis. Now, this is the viva question. Previous slide, we know what is the one of the features of people acute enterobitis, people is small, irregular, and sluggish reaction. Now, viva question, why people is sluggish reaction or non-reactive? Answer is due to edema of the iris and irritation of third nerve ending, also due to posterior sinica. So, there is a three cause of sluggish or non-reacting to people. Number one, due to edema of the iris. Number two, irritation of third nerve ending. Number three, due to posterior sinica. If there is a sinica, there is a no, uh, no easily movement to people. So there is a sluggish reaction. And if there is edema of the iris, there is a resulting there is a sluggish reaction. And another, why people is myotic or small? Answer is due to toxin act on sphincter people. So this is the viva question, and this is especially for brilliant students, extraordinary students, not ever student. So why people is sluggish or non-reacting? Why people is small? You should know about, especially for brilliant student. And now there is an important viva question: sinicia, and even in SQ, in SQ question. And some examiner give as like question define sinicia or the types of sinicia. So if you question arise, what is sinicia and define sinicia? Just what is sinicia? Addition of iris with surrounding structure. Addition of iris with surrounding structure. You know, in from the iris, what is the structure? Cornea. Behind the iris, what is the structure? Lens. So addition of iris with surrounding. That means in front of iris that is cornea when cornea adhered to the cornea the anterior sinica and when addition of iris with lens this is the posterior sinica so simply we classify the sinica anterior sinica and posterior sinica so define sinica addition of iris with surrounding structure classify the sinica anterior sinica and posterior sinica Again, posterior sinica divided into segmental posterior sinica, annular sinica, and total posterior sinica. Classify the sinica, anterior sinica, posterior sinica. And posterior sinica again divided into segmental posterior sinica, annular sinica, and total posterior sinica. And what is anterior sinica? Addition of iris with corneal endothelium. What is posterior sinica? Addition of iris with lens. Now, there is a special term irregular or festoon people. Irregular or festoon people. This is a festoon means there is a, a some uh, billboard, there is a pictures of festoon. In this way, we say festoon people. You know, in acute anterior diabetes, usually patient develop sinicia. For breakdown of sinopia, we will give we will give atropine. What are the function of atropine? Atropine helps to break down of sinicia. So if sinicia is tightly tight, there is a there is impossible of breakdown of no all sinicia. Some are break, some are non-break, or some are attached, some are non atas in this way there is a development of irregular dilatation and it is usually occurs due to atrophy of anterior basis of sinica and looks like of festoon people this is the pictures of posterior sinica what is posterior sinica when iris ad, iris adhered to the or addition of iris with lens, this is a posterior sinicia. This is the festoon people. Again, I said to you, what is festoon people? There is a evitis, there is a sinicia. The hair, there is a total sinicia or annular sinicia. 
you will give atropine after atropine some part is detached some part is non detached if detached or non detached looks like a festoon in this way we say is the festoon people and usually occurs due to atropine and this is the types of posterior synechia segmental posterior synechia just refers to addition of iris to the lens at some points segmental not all structure of iris is involved particular points are involved annular posterior synechia is addition of whole rim of the iris to anterior capsule of lens whole when whole of the iris is involved for synechia and total posterior synechia when addition of total posterior surface of the iris to the anterior lens annular and posterior synechia it is near about close but you should know there is a types segmental posterior synechia annular posterior synechia and total posterior synechia annular posterior synechia when rim is adhered and total posterior synechia when total posterior surface of iris is adhered to the anterior to the lens anterior anterior lens this is the posterior synechia here iris here, here iris adhered to the lens this is the segmental synechia only some points are adhered this is the total synechia and now very important for written question what are the complication of ebates what are the complication of ebates complications are complicated cataract secondary glaucoma retinal detachment and thysis bulb this four is very important and regarding thysis bulb sometime examiner when question arise what is thysis bulb and spelling is very important thysis p s t s p s t s this is a very important p s t s thysis bulb and what are the structure what are the features of thysis bulb it may be small soft sightless shrunken and shrivel small soft sightless shrunken and shrivel and there is some scenario question a 30 years man presented with complaints of pain photophobia redness lacrimation in right eye associated with low back pain associated with low back pain this is the history what is the probable diagnosis anterior uveitis due to acute anterior uveitis due to ankylosis spondylosis this is the probable diagnosis write down other symptom of symptoms and signs like already discussed in my previous slide write down this management is very important now going to management of acute anterior uveitis and before going to management you should know some investigation need to acute anterior uveitis this is a routine hemogram routine this is cbc psr etc serological test skin test and x ray skin test mainly montox for exclusive tuberculosis and vim test sarcoidosis and x ray chest and some joints this is a routine test of uveitis for uveitis now very important treatment protocol of acute anterior uveitis first line treatment of underlying disease like this is the ankylosis spondylitis it treat ankylosis spondylitis this is the cause is tuberculosis it treat tuberculosis cause is inflammatory bowel disease treat the inflammatory bowel cause is psoriatic arthritis treat the psoriatic as so treatment is very important of why this is underlying disease should treat properly then ocular treatment topical mitotis and cyclovirgic topical mitotic and cyclovirgic we we may choose atropine tropicamide homotropine according to severity if severe pain severe uveitis then you choose atropine usually we commonly use atropine and steroid very important there may be we can uh, use locally and systemic and hot compression and use of dark glass this is the treatment protocol here are some question arise there may be what are the drug we will will use in treatment of acute anterior uveitis there may be mitotic 
there may be steroid. This two drug is important. Among two, which is the key drug for treatment of hepatitis? The key drug is steroid. Why steroid is steroid is key drug? Because here is the inflammation. So steroid is a key drug. Why it is important? Because some examiner asks to you what is the key drug of hepatitis? Answer is steroid. Now Topical myditis, atropine, homotropine, tropicamide. Usually we will choose atropine. And another question, role of atropine in acute enteropathies. Role to relieve pain, very important. To prevent formation of posterior sinicure. And to break down of recently from sinicure. So, role of acute enteropathies by atropine is very important. Relieve pain. Formation, prevent the formation of posterior sinicure and to break down and to break down recently from sinicure. And another important term is refractory evitis. Refractory evitis, when evitis is not cured with conventional therapy, that is steroid, known as recalcitrant or refractory evitis. When evitis is not cured with conventional therapy, known as recalcitrant or refractory hepatitis. Treatment of refractory hepatitis are cyclosporine, azathioprine and methotrexate. This is the metabolic agent. It is a you normally not use. If refractory hepatitis then we will choose this like drug. Cyclosporine, azathioprine, methotrexate. Some examiner sometimes asks to you, you say refractory hepatitis not Cure with steroid. Now, what is the treatment for refractory hepatitis? Answer is cyclosporine, azathioprine, and methotrexate. And another important slide: What are the common ophthalmic topical steroid? What are the steroid usually we use in ophthalmic pitries? Are dexamethasone, penicillin, betamethasone, fluoromethanol, and lotapetrol. Among five, low potency steroid is which? Fluoromethanol and lotapenol. Some examiner asks to some students, tell me some low, low potency steroid. Low potency steroid, why it is better? Because it causes less adverse effect. You know, steroid, if you continue the topical steroid, what happened? Intercolor patient may be raised. So, some examiner choice low pattern steroid. The low pattern steroid be, is best because it is not raise the intraocular pressure. Ocular indications of steroid. When we will use steroid, uh, what are the ophthalmic practice of steroid? Steroid, you know, in case of ubitis, we use other than ubitis, there is a, some condition we use steroid. What are that? Blepharitis. Allergic conjunctivity is usually low pattern steroid used and after ocular surgery, systemic ophthalmia, optineuritis, episcleritis, clitis. This condition where I where we use steroid. So question is what are the ophthalmic condition will use steroid? And complication of systemic steroid is important because some examiner asked. In viva procedure, what are the complications of systemic steroid? Our answer is Cushing syndrome, peptic ulceration, osteoporosis, hypertension, muscle weakness or atrophy, inhibition of growth, diabetes, psychosis. I think everybody know this is the medicine question, but some ophthalmologists choose about this question. And complication of topical. Topically, what complication? Ocular side effect, what are they? If you continue steroid, what are the ocular side effects? Raised diopic. There may be develop cataract, risk to corneal ulcer, secondary infection, mydrasis stosis. This is the ocular side effect. What are they? Raised diopic, cataract, risk to corneal ulcer. Secondary infection and mydrasis and ptosis. 
raised IOP also term is secondary glaucoma, special steroid induced glaucoma. So this topic is already discussed in my glaucoma class. I think no need. How steroid increases the intraocular pressure and in event is you should this is up to you. Thank you. Stay safely.